his ads were famous for producing really explicit content and breaking pretty much every copyright law that you could on everything out there. What's up guys, my name is Levi. This is Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding. And today we're gonna to talk about 14 things you didn't know about World Industries. In this episode, we're gonna cover the start of the brand, offshoot companies, controversial ads, and so much more. Make sure you guys stay tuned until the 14th point, our favorite point, it is juicy, Steve Rocco. Steve is a world champion freestyle skateboarder. And by the late 70s, he's winning almost every single skateboard competition he goes into. At this time, Brad Dorfman decides to kick him off Sims because he is a pain to deal with. Since he was a freestyler, he was one of the very early on street skaters, taking his tricks and his style right to the streets. Rodney Mullen. In 1980, Steve Rocco is at one of the world's biggest freestyle competitions, Oasis. He goes there thinking he's going to win, and he gets beaten by a young kid from Gainesville, Florida. This kid? Rodney Mullen. After Rodney Mullen beats Rocco in the Oasis competition, you'd think that they would be enemies. But they actually become really good friends, and Rocco becomes kind of a big brother figure in Rodney Mullen's life. The start. After Rocco gets kicked off Sims by Brad Dorfman, he thinks his career in skateboarding is over. After that, Rocco meets up with Skip Engblom, who owns Santa Monica Airlines, which is SMA, a very famous skateboard company, Rocco starts telling him about his problems. He then goes on to say, you should start a board company and starts showing him the basics. Skip shows him where to get skateboards made, where to get them printed, and which shops that he should sell them through. Rocco takes his credit card. He buys as many boards as he can for $6,000. Three weeks later, he has sold them all. He has $12,000 in his pocket now. At that time, he decides to call the board brand that he is building World Industries because it sounds like some big evil corporation. Next, he takes his 12 grand and he goes and he makes a ton of shirts. He takes those shirts to the shops and says, listen, World Industries has shirts now. You guys gotta buy these things. No one buys any of them. At that point, the company is about to fold. Then he decides he's not defeated. He borrows $20,000 from a loan shark investor named John Kirby. After this, he's just scraping by. He really needs to borrow money just to pay off some of his loans and his debts. At this point, Rodney Mullen cuts him a check for $6,000 to help him with the problems. Because of the $6,000 investment, they became business partners. At this point, Steve Rocco decides to place his bet on street skateboarding. So he builds World Industries around street skating. And because none of the other brands cared about street, he was able to build an all-star team. Under the world umbrella, he had team riders like Jesse Martinez, Jason Lee, Ron Chapman, Jeremy Klein, Nadas Kopis, Daewon Song, Javante Turner, Shiloh Greathouse, and Mark Gonzalez. Early on, Mike Vallely and Rodney Mullen decide to leave Powell and Peralta and join forces with World Industries. The ads. Steve Rocco was a marketing genius. He was a big fan of the book, The Art of War. And that is how he ran his advertising. One of the things that he says is that you take the other person's rule book and you break every single one of their rules. His ads were famous for producing really explicit content and breaking pretty much every copyright law that you could on everything out there. At that time, Vision and Sims were so mad that they went to the main distributor that distributed Vision, Sims, Powell, and World Industries. And they said, listen, if you sell and distribute World Industries, we're done with our relationship. At this time, Pal Peralta also runs an ad making fun of small companies, and Steve Rocco decided this is war. He launches ads through all of his brands making fun of all the bigger skateboard companies. One of the more famous ones that he does is his big Dear George ad. This ad is famous for releasing satirical board graphics making fun of each one of Pal and Peralta's famous boards. This basically made Pal look like fools and it was the nail in the coffin for Powell. Then Steve Rocco was approached by Transworld Skateboarding Magazine and said, 
you can't run your ads in our magazine anymore because they are too explicit and too offensive. So what does Steve Rocco do when he's told that he can't run his offensive ads anymore? Big Brother Magazine. After being told that Rocco couldn't run his offensive ads in Transworld Skateboard Magazine, he decided to start his own magazine. They produced Big Brother Issue 1. They deemed it to be such a piece of crap that they decided they couldn't make people pay money for this, so they gave it away. But over time, the magazine grew in popularity because it basically had all of the content that young kids and youth wanted to talk about with each other, but parents wouldn't let them be exposed to. It basically covered skateboarding, sex, drugs, and everything in between. I got one. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I just was like, grab it. but yeah, I got one and then I was reading it. I was like, oh, this is gnarly, but I just kept reading it. And then over the years, they released some of the most offensive interviews and articles and all that kind of stuff. They ranged from the weed Olympics where people would mail in their weed and then they would smoke it and review it. And that, at that time, weed was illegal in California. Keep that in mind. They had things like trick tips on how to kill yourself as well as every single month, parents and mothers and whoever would write into the magazine being angry, and then they would print the letters and viciously attack them in their responses. Well, here's something your children may be reading that you should definitely know about. It's a shocking magazine. It tells you how to commit suicide, it tells you all about drug use, and also explicit descriptions of sex. It may seem hard to believe, but this magazine is really aimed at kids. Sylvia Lopez has the story behind Big Brother magazine. I can't believe there's not a law against this. this is, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, this is pornographic. The magazine basically was hemorrhaging hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. But the accountant at World Industries found a way to package it and sell it and market it to the head of Hustler magazine. That guy's name was Larry Flint. Flint liked this magazine because it was pushing the boundaries on the First Amendment and free speech. They also made videos at the magazine. Some of these videos gained so much momentum that they became the hit TV show, Jackass. Offshoot Company. Because Rocco hated how he was treated at Sims, he was very quick to hand off other companies to his friends so they could build their own brands. Under the World Industries umbrella, he started Blind Skateboards with Mark Gonzalez, dubbed Blind because it is the opposite of Vision Skateboards, one-on-one -on -one skateboards with Nottis Copus, Plan B with Mike Ternaski. This is a graph from Skateboarder Magazine that shows all of the offshoot companies that were created under World Industries umbrella. Videos. World Industries over the years put out tons of good video content. They put out videos like Rubbish Heap, Love Child, and New World Order. As well as their offshoot companies put out videos like Plan B Questionable, Blind Video Days, and one-on-one -on -one Snuff. Famous filmmaker Spike Jones actually started his career by shooting photos for World Industries. Then he started his filmmaking career when Steve Rocco approached him and gave him his credit card and said, go buy some camera gear and make us a video. Spike Jones went on in his career to create Hollywood movies, skateboard films, and music videos. The Barnyard. World Industries was a huge catalyst in creating the board shape that we skate and know today. Steve Rocco approached their board manufacturer and bribed him with $6,000 to actually buy the press that made the Vision double kick or twin tail, and that's the press that they use to make the barnyard board. Rodney Mullen was actually the one who shaped the board, and you can tell that he took his influence from a freestyle board, the artwork. The graphics were a massive part of the brand and their popularity at World Industries. World Industries hired two guys. They went on to become two of the most influential skateboard graphic makers of our time. They were Mark McKee and Sean Cliver. Over the years at World Industries headquarters, they have a wall of all of the cease and desist graphics that they've accumulated over the years. Next to the graphics, they would post up the cease and desist letters. They got them from people like Disney, Nintendo, Dr. Seuss, Burger King, even the Church of Scientology. They're also famous for some of the most offensive graphics to ever be put on a skateboard. The censorship graphic, napping, and day at the beach, amongst others. Snowboards. Over the years, World Industries has made so many random products. Everything from shoes all the way to snowboards. Although most of these products were failures, 
The snowboards, though, they were successful. Rocco brought in Canadian snowboard and skateboard legend Rob Sluggo Boyce to build this snowboard team. Sluggo said that Rocco offered him an insane amount of money to ride for them. So he quit who he was riding for at the time to join World Industries for skateboarding and snowboarding as a pro rider. Sluggo also at that time joined Duff's for skateboard shoes and Duff's snowboard boots. It's good to note he was the very first ever to have a pro model snowboard boot. Goodbye team. Just like Rocco felt at Sims that he wasn't being appreciated or taken care of, some of the World Industries team riders felt like they weren't getting enough of the piece of the pie or appreciated, so they decided to leave. The most notable was how girl skateboards took a lot of their teams. When everyone started deflecting and started creating their own skater-owned board brands, World Industries sales, they started to dry up. Flame Boy and Wet Willy. The second coming of World Industries skateboards didn't rely on a really solid skateboard team. At one point, their artist, Mark McKee, draws a little devil man on a birthday invitation. Steve Rocco liked this drawing so much that he decided, I want to do something with comic book graphics. And out of that birthed Wet Willy and Flame Boy. He liked this idea because it targeted a newer, younger generation that were just getting into skateboarding. This was a huge market at this time, and his sales tripled in just one year. The end of the world. In 1998, World Industries sells to a venture capital company for $20 million. Up until this point, it was the biggest sale of a skateboard company ever. And one of the cool things to note about this is that they actually got to sell. Whereas a lot of other brands, they would grow and grow and grow and grow, and then they would just start to decline and fail. None of those other brands got to grow to the point of selling and actually making money off their company. It's interesting to note that World Industries is actually back and they're creating a lot of new stuff. It's owned by Pro Skater, Anthony Shetler. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Levi from Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. You just watched 14 things you didn't know about World Industries. If you like this video and you want to know more about World Industries, we've linked a documentary below called The Man Who Sold the World. And it's a documentary about Steve Rocco. While you're down there, click the subscribe button and comment and tell us all the facts that we forgot about World Industries. Also, if you don't subscribe, you're a chum. Now, to get on to the comment of the week. For the comment of the week, we got a real spicy one. I can feel it in my front and my back. It's from our main man, E-Rock. He says, Hi Levi, who is that strange half-naked man running around with a ski mask in? I am now very confused and I need answers. I've never seen a half-naked man. Maybe you're watching something else on another tab in the window. If you guys like this video, you're probably going to like one of these two videos. Click on them as well, like and subscribe. Get there while you can.